Here we have Bayonetta, a spiritual descendant of Devil May Cry, with fast frenetic action and lots and lots of eye candy. But you know, it's really all about the gameplay. It's it's more about uh, more about uh, 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 oh. Uh, it's more, more about the, uh, the, the, the the game, um, yeah. You know, uh, fast uh, tip here, Solid Rev thinks this game is gay. He'll play Zelda where you're a 12-year-old boy with pointy ears, but he thinks this is gay. Anyway, here's Bayonetta, a fantastic action game with just a few little hiccups keeping it from utter, utter greatness. And, I mean, just look at it. Look at this eye candy. You've got to love this shit. There's crotch... Sh look at that. Oh, my God. Flying vagina right in your face. How could you not love that, you know? Aw, oh, come on, hellhound. Quit fucking up my review. Not to mention my view. Jesus Christ. And one thing I can say about the game that I didn't care much for is the story. It doesn't make a hell of a whole lot of sense. It's all about witches and demons and angels and... None of it really uh, clicks at any given time other than that she's really really cool and she happens across a girl who may be her daughter or may be a younger version of her it never really explains that to any great degree uh, this is not a game oh, oh stripper pole this is not a game that you'll uh, spend a whole lot of time uh, analyzing the plot it's just kinda there with a few comedy scenes as you see there Combat is similar to Devil May Cry, but a lot faster, a lot more frenetic, and you have a lot more options to it. Uh, as you can see, you have torture attacks that you can do for uh, extra style points. You can use various weapons, pick up weapons that others drop. Uh, you have gunplay, you have swordplay, you have uh, martial arts hand-to-hand -hand combat. A lot of double jumping. In fact, the, ju the jumping in this game works better than in Devil May Cry. In Devil May Cry, you have this kind of sudden flip and, and direct drop-down kind of jump. This game, uh, the jumping just feels more natural, and you feel like you're more in control of your character when you when you do your jumping. So it makes the platforming elements of it work a lot better. Uh, you have uh, the same general kind of combat uh, combo system that you would have with Devil May Cry. Uh, it, you can definitely feel the influence from uh, the designers, obviously, since they're the ones that worked on the uh, Devil May Cry series. Uh, but it just moves so much faster than the Devil May Cry games did. Uh, when you play this and then go back to play Devil May Cry, you will feel like you're moving in slow motion. Now, a lot, as you can see there, her clothes disappeared for a second. A lot of her weapons and weaponry magic and attacks are based on her hair. Her clothes are not really there. Her clothes are made of her hair. And so uh, there are various uh, spells that she'll do where her hair disappears and you see a little skin. And you'll have little quick moments like that, not quite what you would call a quick time event, it happens in real time, but little shocker moments to keep you in the game. Uh, the, what, the enemy variety is pretty good, uh, they don't have uh, too much uh, recolorization, you know, where you've got the same enemy, just has a different color skin, you know, that, that doesn't really happen too much in this game. You will fight some of the same types of enemies over and over from level to level, but the variety really surprised me as far as the number of enemies that you could uh, come up against. Now, you see how everything went purple there. Uh, this game is basically a button masher's dream. You really are rewarded for learning the combos and mastering the combo system, but if you're one of those guys that can't, uh, doesn't have the hand-eye coordination for that and you just mash buttons really fast, it doesn't matter what skill level you have this game set to, you can get by with that pretty fast as long as you use your R2 button because your R2 button is your dodge so whenever you time your dodge just right it goes into what's called witch time where everything turns purple and slows down and you're able to pull off a lot of massive combos with no one being able to touch you so as long as you master the R2 you can pretty much breeze right through this game at just about any difficulty level now here's one of her final, one of her final attacks she's getting ready to do here this is called a climax and as you can see, she strips naked, and a big old wad of her hair comes flying down and turns into a big giant dog head thing that swallows the uh, the bad guy. And then it's just a rapid button mash to get as many points as possible. This can sometimes reward you with little uh, golden records that you can use to trade in for better weapons and things of that nature. 
and then it's over all too briefly and her clothes go back which is always the worst part but as you can see there's very uh, a lot of the goals in this game are uh, item collection there's all sorts of hidden items everywhere around the game that you can pick up that uh, will earn you trophies like you just see right there and uh, will give you uh, options for upgrading various uh, different capabilities weapons which you can do at the gates of hell store this is where basically uh, Morpheus will uh, trade you uh, those records that I was mentioning and other things that you collect for weapons, accessories, items, uh, different techniques, that kind of thing. Uh, the, the, the sheer amount of things that you can do to upgrade your character is really extensive. You really cannot get the most out of Bayonetta through one playthrough because it will take you more than one playthrough to max out everything that she can do and once she is maxed out uh, you are a veritable you know, uh, TNA killing machine now one thing I will say about this game I have played the 360 version I rented it and the graphics on the 360 version are decidedly better uh, you can, you know, I know that they said uh, that Sega had uh, gone back to the drawing board to uh, try to get the performance level up to an acceptable standard, blah, blah, blah. Didn't happen, okay? As you can see throughout this video, there's a lot of horizontal screen tearing, and whereas the 360 version stays at a pretty solid 60 frames per second for the most part, this game uh, on PS3 pretty much stays at around 30 and then occasionally drops below that when there's a lot of stuff going on on screen and you'll see more of that horizontal screen tearing. Uh, so you know that's one of the reasons why I'm not giving this a perfect score it, it the graphics just drop. Uh, they're not as good as 360 so don't expect them to be but the gameplay is completely unaffected as you can see you do have quick time events and the controls are just very very responsive so as far as just the, the actual gameplay the fun factor of it it's no different than the 360 version in fact I preferred this one because of the controller and in between levels you'll have these little uh, game mini games where you're shooting angels for points uh, they're not really all that much fun and they don't last very long so that's probably their best feature and then before you know it you're back on the ground talking to these giant demons that sound like uh, Jabba the Hutt and have big dragon heads growing out of their crotch and big angel faces on their stomachs don't ask I didn't just focus on that ass just focus on that sweet sweet ass anyway um, speaking of Job of the Hutt, the voice acting sucks. Listen to this jack off. I mean, he sounds like Joe Pesci just stepped off a of good fellas for fuck's sake. <laughs> voice acting is not the strong suit of this game. It's all about the gameplay. And, uh, what can I say? Uh, as far as the music goes, it has this kind of Japanese jazz feel to it, and, uh, like, like I might have said in, in uh, previous uh, videos, yeah, I don't really care for it any more than the Japanese new metal that a lot of these games have. I, this proclivity for sticking with this kind of new jazz sound, and you hear it in a lot of the anime too, I just don't care for it. I'd rather have big sweeping epic music than listening to any you know, of this new synth jazz stuff. What it all boils down to is this is a really fantastic action game. The graphics suffer a little bit from the transfer to 360, and it's got overall a really typical anime sub-level shitty story that's really hard to follow. But if you can get past that and just play for the TNA and the sweet, sweet action, but mostly the TNA, Bayonetta gets six stars out of seven. That's what she said, baby.